go from Mike Polk, the architect of our new favorite game, yeah, to yeah. Kobe Altman, the architect of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Well done. On, well done. So on using Monday, the Mike Brady architect bridge, that was brilliant. Brad got us an exclusive one-on-one -on -one with the GM of the Cavs. Let's that, take a listen. That was exclusive? Wow. Didn't talk to anybody else? Great, Mike. That was Brad, awesome. you're the man. Mike, that was awesome. Yep. Hey, your mics are hot. Bro. Brad Sellers, Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show here with the architect of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Kobe Altman, who's put this special team together. Coach, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Brad. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, so let's get down to the nuts and bolts of this. You've, you've pulled off the, the deal of the century here. You put the Cavaliers in a position to move forward. Talk about how you constructed this team and how the deal came about. So, I mean, going... I'd say three years back before we even get to the Donovan piece, uh, we were fortunate in terms of our ownership and chairman and Dan Gilbert. Um, after the four-year finals run, he let us reset, uh, recalibrate, and build to the draft. And you know, our goal was to have sustainable success uh, with this franchise and to do it through the draft. And we've, we've had some pretty remarkable drafts. Obviously, the, the two best guys we got out of the draft with Darius and Evan Mobley uh, have made real jumps in their careers, specifically Darius last year. Um, and so to have pillars in your organization through the draft was, was a big step. Grow the culture, grow the player development, uh, have it, put them in a position to be successful. But we've been also very opportun opportunistic in the trade market. And so when Jared Allen became uh, somewhat available, uh, we kind of creeped into that deal too um, and got Jared here, really changed the trajectory of our, our rebuild, if you will. Um, and then the Donovan Mitchell trade was just a incredible, unique opportunity that we felt we couldn't pass up knowing we'd be able to keep Darius, uh, Jared, and, and Evan. So let's talk about that because I'm glad you said it. Youth, ability to project forward. Talk about, talk about how difficult that is to, to get guys in their mid-20s to be here at an all-star level and have a position to acquire them and then move the team forward. So I think what's, what's really unique about this situation, what's super exciting for Cleveland is these guys are going to be here for a long time. You know, we re-signed Darius Garland to a super max contract that's going to keep him here for another six years at least. Uh, Evan's still on rookie scale, so he's going to be here for the foreseeable future. Uh, last year we signed Jared Allen to a five-year deal, um, and Donovan has three years left. So you have a group of young guys that we really think can grow together. Um, Donovan Mitchell's 26, and he's going to be the oldest player in the starting lineup, uh, which is kind of crazy. Uh, so they have a real runway to grow together, and this is not just about one year. Um, it's about the years moving forward and guys really hitting their peak together. So final question for you. Kobe, in this, in this, in this profession, uh, it takes time to uh, accumulate a, a reputation where people want to do deals with you. You have shown yourself as a person that's savvy enough to do deals here. You, you're doing deals with people across this league. Talk about how that puts Cleveland in a position to be successful on its future runway. No, I, I, I appreciate that. And look, I think I talk about it. My, my job at its core is to bring the very best talent to Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and set them up for success. And listen, Donovan Mitchell is one of the best best players in the world, um, and, and we were able to achieve that. But my job is that make sure you have great relationships across the league, make sure you're available, uh, make sure p people trust you. Um, you know, we moved in silence on that one, and I think there's a trust level and a level okay. of comfort That's that I have with mm -hmm. my counterparts around the league stealth. to be able to, to make transactions, <laughs> um, have stuff not leak through the media. Um, and be very transparent uh, in my negotiations. Again. Get sides the value they need. Um, if both, si both sides have some pain points, that means it's a good deal. If both sides are happy, that means it's a good deal. And I think we continue to do good business across the league, and we'll continue to do that. So on behalf of the Cavalier Faithful, we're excited, looking forward to it. And again, you're hearing it firsthand from Kobe Altman, the architect of the Cleveland Cavaliers. All right, let's nice see the handshake. Job, Did we get a handshake at the end of this? Oh, it's got an arm grip. We got an no arm grip. No handshake. Because all week we've been kind of slow mowing the end of these interviews <laughs> to show the handshakes. That was and good. Brad, that was well done, man. Well, well, very good. Well, well done. First of all, I was drafted off. Thank you. I was drafted off the yeah. sideline. That's what I heard. And let me first thank uh, Kobe Altman and the Cavaliers organization and Ryan Banks from the Cavaliers mm -hmm. running the communications and, and media set up with the Cavs being very hospitable to us yes, uh, for great. their entire day. Yeah. Right? And so we were out there and we had a number of players obviously that came through. And then the, the unique part about it was Kobe agreed to just, he said, I, Brad, I'll come over there with you and sit down and do it. So I thought Mikey was gonna do it. And he was like, no, you're not doing this interview. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So Mikey tossed it to me and I just wanted to get a couple things off because I think the important question I just asked was the last one. 
in order to do deals in the NBA, it's always about relationships. Yeah. They have to trust you, right? Because they. Why is that so important? Because you can get burned in a deal. You can end up looking foolish. Remember how what happened to Jim Paxson when uh, uh, Carlos Boozer deal? Right, all right, right, on the right, table, right, yeah, yeah. right. And right. then Carlos ended up going backdoor to him, mm-hmm. uh, and Boston came in here, and was it Utah? I mean, Utah, Utah, came, Utah. Utah, Utah came in here, yep. and kind of backdoored him, right? And so th- that blew up that relationship. Secrecy yep. is paramount. So it was, it was especially well, in the NBA. So what was paramount here is that you have a relationship with somebody. So we went back to Utah, which we had done deals with before. Obviously, there was a good relationship between Kobe Altman and Danny Ainge. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. There was a trust factor here because we had done deals before. And that was lacking between the Knicks and, and the Jazz. And that was lacking between the Knicks and the Jazz. Which probably cost them and, that and deal. And so when the Knicks got cute with it, the Jazz were like, oh, I don't know about you. And then they end up communicating back with Cleveland, who thought they were out, of, were out of the deal again. And they were able to construct that deal real quick. And it was because of the trust factor was one plus one, and that ended up getting Donovan Mitchell here in town here. And I will tell you, to our benefit, because the point is, the core nucleus of this team is all young. There's a long runway in in professional sports. Four or five years is a long runway. We talk about the youth. How important, though, is having a piece like Kevin Love, too? Well, I think Kevin... And Rubio. And Rubio. Kevin and Rubio, to your excellent point. Kevin and Rubio have a chance to take a leadership, a real leadership role on this team. You have to understand that the young horses are the way of the future, but they got to be honed in, understand what we're doing. You saw that last year when we were in the playoff, play in what happened down the stretch. Garland struggled, uh, Mobley at times struggled because they're finding their way out. The benefit of having a person like Donovan Mitchell here gives us a person who has been there and done that. Kevin's leadership been there, done that. Rubio has been around an international player, solid reputation in this league. I think the biggest, the bigger impact is when you see off the field on the planes, in the locker room, in the hotel, mm-hmm. making sure they're doing things the right how way. How to be a pro on how a to be winning a, how, team. How to be a pro. Now, yeah. I, was, I was forced into my own career. I was around a bunch of older guys that knew what it meant and taught me what it meant to be a pro. I've been on some other, I've seen some other teams, like all young players with no leadership here, and it goes sideways it's like real, school with no real quick. That's right. right. And, and They all and, think they know it all. Right, Brad, Brad I look at this. If, if they can land Jay Crowder, right? If they can land somebody like that, that's tough nose, that plays you know, defense, plays defense, been around. Yeah. I really, I, I'm looking at this roster on paper, and I know it, it needs time to gel, but they got all the requisite parts. Yeah, where's to be, the hole? Uh, to be a pr- problem. And for some if teams. Mobley develops his offensive right. game, right? right. So the hole is yeah. that the hole. I think apparent to everyone here is at the three. That's yeah. where the hole is. But they had to give up a three to get to get the two. two yeah. right. right. So they got the two. Now they're looking to fill the three. Right. And so. In your mind, who steps up? Is Jay Crowder a good fit? He could be a good fit because yeah. you got a three and D guy, right? You not—I don't think you'll get much offensive production from him. But you, but don't, you don't need, need it. it. You don't yeah. need if it. If you got Garland and you got uh, Mitchell, and then you've got uh, Mobley, so you, you you're you're good there, right? The question is, Jay Crowder Crowder makes I think ten million dollars, right? Yep. And so they have to absorb a little bit more money here. But again, Dan's been willing to do that, yeah, though. But again, if you if you look at the long trajectory here. I think that the opportunity here for Cleveland to be special in a Eastern Conference, which is special. This is not yeah. the Western. No, you're right. Eastern Conference. Yeah. The best it's been in a while. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to make moves. I think they see that. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that's why they're in the mix. And I think they're scouring the, 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 the landscape to find out if there's a player out there that they can bring into the fold. When you talk to your buddies that you played with that still follow the league, one of the things that has me most excited was immediately after the trade was made for, for Mitchell, when you looked around at the the name players that were tweeting about, uh oh, we, yeah. we see you, Cleveland, yep. M- Magic Johnson, mm-hmm. and then a lot of current players that are currently in Brown, the league, mm-hmm. looking around with the eyeball emojis and saying, yeah. Cleveland just made a huge jump. What are your buddies that you played with that are still following the league? Yeah. What are they saying about what Cleveland's doing? Well, first thing they said, what the hell is Cleveland doing? This is not typically Cleveland. Right in the mix early here and put some money on the table. So that's un, that's unfamiliar territory for many people that I know and play play in this league. Cleveland has taken a position, a very aggressive position, and it kind of mirrors what Dan Gilbert has done. In I don't know if you've been to the city of Detroit lately and yeah. see how he's rebuilt downtown Detroit. It is basically, him. basically led Stolo, by Bedrock's company here. Yeah, right. So he's not afraid. 
He's not a guy that's gonna say I'm gonna wait to the second year because typically in this town we always pick up people at the end of the career. So the Browns move with Watson was unlike anything in yeah, Cleveland, ever. Sure. right? And so to go out and get Mitchell is, a, is never unlike something. That. That and now the Guardians got to sign Aaron Judge. Right. Let me ask you this: Yeah, but, but let's, not get, let's not get over our skis. <laughs> is there is there pressure organization to organization because we've ha- we've seen something in Cleveland in the last six seven months that I cannot remember a six-month stretch that saw this kind of movement. Yeah. You it's had the Guardians signing one of their all-star MVP caliber free agents. We've never done that. Mm-hmm. They've always walked. Right. Yeah. You've got the Browns making this mega deal worth more guaranteed money than anybody that's ever signed a deal in the NFL to bring in Deshaun Watson. I'm wondering... If Dan Gilbert, who really has equity with the fans because he's the only one that's won a championship in anyone's lifetime, Dan Gilbert saying, well, wait a minute. We got to make that splash too. Yeah. Because we got to keep up with the Joneses. The Browns and the and the, and the Guardians have done this. Let's make the Donovan Mitchell deal and let's go. Well, I think that there's obviously some synergy here. And I be clear because I was with the Guardians on Monday and they were like, we love it. We're like, it's a special time, a special time in this town. Yeah, it and, is. and I think there's some inner competition between the three because everybody wants to be the top dog. They here, were saying right? they love what the Guardians and the yeah, Browns are yeah, doing. Yeah, 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 exactly. I love that. They like that. I right? love that. Because it creates year-round synergy here. Sure. Right now, it's up to us to capitalize on it. And it puts pressure on because you want to be the best show in town. You don't want the yeah. If I'm the Guardians, I don't want to be the Browns to be the best show in town. I want to be good. You yeah, so they're wanna, not just competing want, with the Twins and I the White Sox. I want to be the show with, in town. No, show, that's right? a great point. And, and think show. about we've talked about recently a lot about how like this is the first time in forever that all three teams are good. Not only are all three teams good, all three teams are good and young. Yes. Yeah. I mean, especially the Guardians and, and the Cavs. But even the Browns, like, yeah. like of all the really good players on the three teams, how many are over 30? Like and, almost none. Well, so I, to, I, to, the, to the Cavs, what's your point here? The Cavs have people locked up. They don't have to break up off this thing. Unless At right. least three, unless, three seasons. Unless it goes sideways. Right, 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 right. Unless it goes sideways. Which knowing the personalities right. of these players probably won't right. happen. You never know. So the, the, I think the Mitchell's uh, uh, acquisition was, was probably best because he seems to have a personality that this team was missing. Yeah, a little uh, bit of edge. A little Identity. edge to him. Yeah. Yeah, a, a guy little. that I can get the ball to down the stretch and say, go ahead and make a play for me, right? He Somebody walk around is like, willing to. He walk to, around like he know it. Right. Like you, you see him come in. Yeah, I know. I know. I just why now. I let, here, let me be. Let me be clear. I want to make sure that uh, I shout out Dave Dombrowski from the Cavs too, because they put this. I mean, they opened up Ultimate Cleveland. Uh, welcome to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show with uh, open arms. Right. At the, at the media day, especially they did. they did. Especially this is what this was always my thing. You know, when you're trying to do a show like this. You got to gain traction. You got to gain a little bit of trust with some of the teams as well. Mm-hmm. So you absolutely to, to have know to. that to know that y'all y'all gonna put on a good product. You guys are, are reputable in what you do, and for the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show to be you know embraced and be able to be oh. at Cavs Media Day here, let me was sh- big. Let me shout out BJ too because BJ was big here because they watched this show. They watch and say, "Let me see what you're saying over here about us," good. right? Because they want to know that. They want the world to know that they have a product here. They're working behind the scenes to put this product on the floor. They're preparing for a great run here, right? There's some pressure over there because they didn't acquire these players to come in last place. <laughs> yeah. No, they're like we're not. We're not, not here for yeah. that, no. right? And so the, the the thing about it, I will tell you about Donovan Mitchell. Now, when I was playing, the best players at the media day would be the first ones to leave. Right. Jordan Pippen would be the first ones out the door, mm. right? He stayed the whole right. time. Donovan yeah. Mitchell, they had to kick him out. Yeah. Was, what was Mikey? Five, four o'clock. He was still there. This thing started at like noon. I love to hear that. Everybody else was That's gone. Donovan Mitchell walking that. around. Who got? Because he door. understands yes. he's paying his salary. Yeah, right. At the end of the That's day, cool. it's the fans, and if the fans aren't there, there's there's no That's money for the product. Cool. Hey guys, I, I got to cut in for uh, two seconds. A, we have Tyvis, so we're gonna bring Tyvis in. Oh, great. And also, B, Miles is talking to the media right now. He said it's a game time decision on whether or not he'll play. We'll continue to keep uh, a lookout and any updates on what's happening. But in his words, he called it the crash, quote, a hell of an event. So anything else we see from Miles will kind of pop it up on the screen. But he is speaking to the media right now. And speaking of media, we have Tyvis. 